Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice with part three of getting started with Thomcraft. Yes, so today we are going to be covering basic alchemy, elementum, nitor, thomium, and exchanging, and basic essentia distillation. We're just going to start off with a thomonomicon. Now I've been doing more research at the research table as we discussed in previous episodes and what we're going to be discussing today is this the crucible now how we make that I'll show you in just a moment here we are with the basic ingredients we've got a cauldron got some netherrack and flint and steel now these aren't all required but these are my recommended uh, basic setup so going into the nether is usually a good idea if anything just to get you yourself a piece of nether rack uh, but you'll want to start off with the nether rack dig down oops a couple spaces and light that thing up with some flint and steel now you can use other sources and it's usually a really good idea to surround uh, fire with uh, brick or some kind of fireproof item uh, but in this case we're just going to place it over the fire and then we're going to just right click with the wand and you've got yourself a crucible and how this works is you just fill it with some water and over time it will start to bubble and boil which you'll have to be careful because if you stand on top of it while it's doing that you will take damage and it'll be uh, some pretty good damage pretty quickly uh, so obviously scalding water is going to hurt um, you'll put in items and uh, uh, essentially based on their aspects you will create one other item and sometimes more but there are drawbacks you might have leftover ingredients uh, because some items uh, for instance this bucket here let's scan that it has two aspects on it metallum and vacuos now let's say I only needed metallum for my recipe well then you'd have vacuos floating around in the crucible so you would end up having that uh, over time evaporate into the atmosphere or turn into uh, some flux which is uh, not necessarily good um, but can be depending upon if you really need that uh, so uh, let's get started with some of the recipes on how to use this now what we're first going to make is nitor nitor is kind of a, a torch substitute but it also can be used to uh, heat things on uh, occasion like your crucible for instance in a much safer manner plus you can walk right through it once placed in the world now to make it you need three ignis three lux and three potentia then you need to toss in a piece of glowstone dust and that is the uh, catalyst for this and it essentially will take these essentia infuse it into the glowstone and create yourself some nitor now there are many recipes that you could use to make this I'm just giving you some of the more basic simple ones so that you can uh, make this for yourself uh, to start with you get two nitor with three coal or charcoal or equivalent to those uh, and six torches plus two glowstone dust for the uh, catalyst. Now the reason that I'm suggesting a recipe for two is because it uses three of each. Now finding items that only have one aspect on it is very difficult. Torches are really good for lux, that's all there is on them, but if you have something like a piece of coal you can see that there's two of each of these aspects on it. So therefore if I have three of them I can make six plus six lux and two catalysts equals a nice clean two nitor. So let's do this. All right, take some of these here. And you just toss them in your crucible. One, two, three. And you can see the ingredients show up. And then your catalyst, one, and two. And you can see popped it right onto my hotbar there. I have two pieces of nitor. Just like that. Now, if I were to leave the items in there, let's say I toss one of those in there. You see I've got 
uh, Ignis and uh, Lux and a couple others in there, over time those will start boiling down to their primal aspects. You can see, there we go, uh, the Lux just started uh, reducing itself and they will eventually go into the atmosphere. Now if you want to just clear this out instead of uh, waiting for it to do it by itself, with an open hand you can shift right click, oops, with a wand, shift right click, and it goes into the sky. And you can see there, this is flux. I'm going to see if I can actually catch it. No, it disappeared. But there we go, flux flu. So you can see it's got side effects on that. And that what that does is I believe it increases cost on uh, some things, but there are other side effects you could possibly get, negative ones primarily from that. Uh, so I recommend if you're going to be using your crucible and you're going to clear it out uh, regularly that you end up using a, um, uh, excuse me, that you end up using an open space above it so that the uh, stuff can go straight up and out and you don't need to worry about it sticking on the ceiling and uh, sticking around and hurting you. Now it's also possible that if you end up putting too many items in a crucible, it will overflow all around you. Then you'll have liquid flux instead of uh, the uh, gaseous kind. Now in order to clean that up, there are advanced ways of doing it, but at this point you just end up having to put blocks down to do that. So let me take, uh, let's see, a stack of these, there we go, and I'll just... So you can see here it's boiling out and it's going all over the place. It's messy. It's not going to go away by itself and it's actually going to just start infecting the area with bad things. So you're just going to want to do what I'm doing here and placing blocks down to get rid of it. And then once again I'm going to evacuate the contents there. Now it's also possible that uh, you have too little in there. Uh, for example, if I end up making uh, a recipe for Nitor, and I've made several of them, let me set it back to daytime here, and I made several of them, uh, it will end up draining the water level down lower and lower. So you're going to want to make sure that you refill this regularly, probably after every recipe if possible, and uh, that'll make sure that you uh, can keep on top of things. Now let's check out the next item. We're going to be covering Elementum. Now this stuff here is a bit more dangerous. It is uh, actually highly explosive, and I don't have an exact recipe for this one, so we will have some leftover ingredients. It takes three Ignis, three Perdi Perdito, Perdicio, excuse me, and uh, three Potentia, plus a catalyst of either charcoal or coal, which for all intents and purposes in Thalmcraft are identical. So you don't really have to worry about that. I personally use them just so that I can remember how many catalysts I will need. In this case, I have two charcoal because I need two catalysts and three coal, which are just going to give me the uh, aspects that I need for the recipe. Now I also have cobblestone. Now cobblestone has terra on it as well. So I'm going to have, in the end, six leftover terra, which you could possibly try and use in another recipe, but uh, I don't know of any recipes that currently use just six terra. Uh, you could uh, do other ingredient combinations, but like I said, I'm just giving you some basic, easy to find, easy resources so that you can make these for yourself. So let's start gathering these up and see if we can make ourselves some elementum. So first, toss in some coal, then toss in my cobble and my catalysts. And I've got elementum. Now there are a few uses for this, uh, one of which as, is a uh, fuel. Now to give an example, here I have a furnace where I put a full stack of coal, 64 coal in, and a full stack of uh, potatoes. And it ended up cooking all of them using 8 coal. Now if I go into a regular furnace with Elementum as the fuel, it only used up two Elementum for an entire stack of potatoes. So it's a really, really good fuel source. Uh, and it'll also be uh, very useful for later on uh, exploits in uh, Thumbcraft. But the other use 
you've got to be careful because these things can be thrown just like potions. So if you have one of these in your hand and you right click something, be aware you might accidentally throw it instead of ac uh, opening up an inventory or something of that nature. To give you an example, there you go. It kind of uh, destroys a three a block area. It shouldn't destroy anything as dangerous uh, or as um, resistant as stone. Um, but just to give you an idea that these things can be uh, somewhat dangerous to you or those around you. So that's pretty much it for that one there. And uh, something I neglected to show you is that when you have Nitor, you place it down. It will actually create a little torch uh, that you can walk through. It's very pretty, much better than your standard torches. And it is not giving off any damaging heat. So it's not like fire where you will catch on fire. And therefore it is a much safer and more preferred method of um, putting underneath your uh, crucible than an ignited um, netherrack piece that may set things on fire. Uh, it might also allow you to you know, do more aesthetics things like, uh, for instance, I've got them on top of those pe the, the obelisks over there and so on. All right, on to the next item. And here we have Thaumium. This is going to be pretty cool. This stuff here is just as durable as uh, iron, but it's uh, much more enchantable and uh, can be used uh, later on for even better items. But uh, to start with, you can just start making the same tools, you know, like pickaxe, uh, sword, uh, hoe, and axe, uh, plus all the standard armor with Thaumium ingots. So how to make those? Well, there are many ways, as usual, that you can put the ingredients in and uh, make these. But I'm giving you some of the basic options here. Now, I found two relatively simple ways of doing it. One is with uh, four pieces of mossy cobblestone. And those have the uh, aspects as shown here on them. Because you're going to need four of the, uh, is it precantatio, I believe it is? Let's double check that. Yeah, precantatio. You'll need four of that, uh, plus an iron ingot for the uh, uh, end part there. But um, let's see, great wood logs. Those have one precantatio on them as well, and three of the, I believe it's arbor, on there. So you're going to have some leftovers on these when you make it. It's probably going to make a mess uh, if you end up making a whole lot of it, which you probably will end up doing at some point. Now, I'm going to do this just so that I can uh, upgrade my armor that I have right now. Um, let's see here. My game mode is currently showing that I'm wearing the uh, Thaumaturge's clothing here, and I have three and a half uh, armor units. So let's just do this with these ones here. Walk up, and one, two, three, four. And of course, these images that you're seeing are only visible because... There we go, Thaumium ingot, and I have 12 arbor left over. They're only seeable uh, because I have the goggles of revealing on. Now if I didn't have these, I could actually still see these by looking at the crucible. No, I guess not. That was a previous uh, version, I think. But um, So you'll have to guess if you don't have goggles made already. Just keep in mind that you need to measure all your ingredients out before you make a recipe. All right, so let's say I do that a lot of times. I get uh, plenty of thaumium ingots, uh, about 24, to uh, get myself a full set of armor and make ourselves some armor here. So it'll be the same recipe, you know, uh, just five in an upside down U for um, uh, a helmet, seven for pants, and so on. And you'll get these uh, items here. I'll put them on so you can see what they look like. Now, the helmet does not have goggles attached to it, so you will not gain the benefits of the goggles. But you can see here, uh, you know, the um, the look of it is a little bit better, in my opinion, than the uh, weird goggle-eyed look <laughs> with the goggles on before. But uh, it's definitely a much better uh, armor item. Now, you can also get this, um, let me change my game mode here, you can actually enchant these, uh, this armor much better. So I'm going to take you to my little enchanting room so we can try our luck and see what happens. 
Oops. Might help if I actually take the armor off so that we can enchant it. All right, we got. Oh, look at that! Blast protection four, repair two, respiration three, and of course, repair is a thumbcraft only enchantment. Uh, we'll be going into enchantments in a future episode. Protection four, I'm breaking three. Now, some people are probably saying, you know, protection four. Oh, that's not the best. You know, well, it is pretty darn good considering that if you use iron armor, you'd get the same or worse. Um, it's just that this stuff here will tend to get more enchantments on it, just like a, like a gold armor would. And it's got the uh, defense and durability of iron. Alright, and next, we are going to cover a little bit more of mad metal metallurgy. Magical metallurgy, excuse me. Uh, metal purification and gold purification. These here essentially uh, allow you with a small sacrifice of metal, metallum if you will, uh, to create more. So you end up getting more um, uh, iron from a little bit of iron. It just takes a little bit of practice and doing, figuring out the recipes to do so. I will not be doing that for you, I'll leave that to you guys. And uh, same thing with gold, you can end up doing that, making more from less, but you will need other ingredients to do so. Uh, then there's uh, transmutation, where you can turn uh, you know, other metals, for instance I can get this from gold, and uh, create iron, get iron nuggets. Same thing with gold, you could actually use uh, different items to obtain these aspects, and results get more gold nuggets. So that would be how you would transmute those. Now there are other items on here, and we're going to cover just a few more pieces. Magic tallow. Now this stuff here doesn't seem like much, but it, it can actually make some pretty things. Uh, it's simply just some rotten flesh with some precantatio in your crucible, and you should get magic tallow. Now what that'll allow you to do for starters is to make candles. And these candles have multiple uses as well. Uh, one is to uh, create a light source, just like a torch. Uh, and another is to be used with an infusion uh, area, which uh, I will get into in a future episode, probably the next one. But you can co also color these by combining them with uh, dyes in a uh, work table or um, crafting bench. And you can see here I've got some of the colors uh, for sample right now. Uh, there's a whole lot, I think there's like maybe 16 colors, just like the normal Minecraft colors. So you'll have a little something to choose from. And uh, that's pretty much it for the moment for uh, Magic Tallow. Um, alternately, there's also glass files, which you can use for Essentia, which we're going to get into next. What have I gotten myself into? This looks like a big, complicated mess. Well, don't worry, that's what you're watching this video for. I'm going to try and simplify things for you so that you don't end up with a whole big mess like this. Or at least, not unless you want to. So, to start off in your Thaumonomicon, we're going to be focusing on Essentia Distillation. Now, I'm going to go off into these branches of the Warded Jars and Void Jars, plus Essentia Tubes and Advanced Essentia Tubes, but I'm not going to be getting into the uh, other items here, Essentia Crystallization, Centrifuge, and Alchemy. That may be a future bit by bit, uh, but for now, the Essentia Distillation. First thing we need is an alchemical furnace made with arcane stone blocks, crucible, and furnace in an arcane workbench with a few uh, items here. Now. Of course, arcane blocks are made with uh, smooth stone and uh, some kind of shard in the center in a workbench as well. So, let's show you how this works. To start, I'm going to put one down here, and then uh, it's it functions similar to a furnace, but in a different way. The output is not what you get uh, in this. So you can see here, there's an area for fuel. Now I'm going to use Elementum because it runs faster and better in this process than any other fuel source. So I'm putting that in there, and then you'll end up putting in some kind of ingredient. Now I'm just going to use Amber as an, uh, an example. You'll notice it actually burned it up. That's it cooking, and it's been cooked. This is it processing, it's stewing. This is not allowing it to actually go anywhere. So what you need next is 
the next part, which is an alembic. Now, if you go to the next page in here, it shows uh, that you need to make V filters, which you will uh, be able to use in other inventions as well. And with V filters, you can make arcane alembics as such in an arcane workbench. Now, how those work, by shift clicking on top, there we go, uh, I can put that in place, and you notice the numbers just increase there above what I was looking at. And that is it taking some of the aspects. Now what happened is amber has two aspects on it. You see the little uh, bear trap symbol and the gem crystal. Well, it has, I put in two of those. So some of them have gone in, the rest have not. Each one of these alembics will hold one aspect, no more than that. Uh, so if I put another one on top, it will actually put the next aspect in that. You notice it's got a little connection here and that's how those work. Now you may think that you can put them on the side but they it, because it looks like they connect but they don't actually function that way so don't bother. Uh, now you can put other items on the side like essential tubes but just so that you know before we get there you can actually have a stack of up to five of these in a row therefore storing up to five different items or aspects rather. So how do you get those out of there and what good are they to you? Well, allow me to explain further. Next in there is Essentia Tubes. Essentia Tubes allow you to transport Essentia, which is a liquefied form, which is what you're seeing here, of the aspects so that you can use them in other uh, creations. Now you can use Essentia Tubes by just plopping it on the side of the Alembic here and actually running it just like you would a plumbing pipe system. Now, what good is that? Well, you can pipe this into warded jars, which is here. And those are simply made in an arcane workbench again. And then I do recommend keeping yourself some labels so that you can identify things even when you don't have your uh, goggles of uh, uh, seeing on there. Plus, if you take a jar label and a file of Essentia, which I showed you the file of earlier, uh, you can actually create a label without putting it on a jar. But we'll get into that in a second. For now, let's just take some jars. There's a jar there. Automatically, it sucked out the in insides of that Alembic. Now, the other one is still connected. Now, if I do this nothing happens because only one aspect is going to go in there. So I have a l purified liquid aspect, four of it in there. And this other one is not going to go in. So what you'll have to do is actually have another jar. Now you can actually uh, just oops, connect it on the opposite side, you know, like so, and then uh, connect it down and that would work. Also what would work, let's remove these for now put in another couple pieces of amber and I will show you, you can actually take the jar itself where'd it go? there it is and you can just take it out by just right clicking on it and there we go, you see it now has eight in there so there are multiple methods of doing this of course I'm in creative at the moment so keep that in mind uh, also um, you can get very complex and crazy with stuff. Uh, we're not going to get quite that far yet. <laughs> but uh, often, the simplest way to do it, and fastest for early on, is just to take the jar and right-click it on the Alembic once it's got, uh, it's either close to being full or it's got uh, the amount in there that you want. And it's possible if you uh, end up taking some out while it's cooking stuff, that it may put more of this aspect in here, and then you're other aspect may end up in another one. It, it, it can get a little confusing. So for now, we're just going to get rid of those to keep things simple for this example. So, these tubes, you can use them in many ways. Let's see here. I'm going to take this, put it here, and we're going to get rid of it there. So how can I make these two work together? Right now, I have... Oops my bad. There we go. I have a 
very terrible mixture here. This is not going to work because right now it's trying to put vitreous in there and uh, this other aspect. I can never remember what the name of that one is. Uh, but uh, So to do that you can use your wand as kind of a wrench. Now to remove your um, uh, focus, for, for instance I have a focus on here, just shift F should remove it provided you don't have any keys messed up. But then just right click and it will automatically undo any connections or redo the connections. You see now it is clear and went all the way through and this is now empty. So you see I can actually undo any of these connections I want and bring them back just as easily. So often what I will do is I'll put down several of these and then whichever one I want it to go to I'll put it in. And each one of these warded jars will hold about 64 of the Essentia which is as I said before the liquefied version of an aspect. So how do I take this and put it into some items or create labels? Well with a file if you have at least eight in there, which I do right now, you can use a glass file which will hold eight, no less, no more. And you can see there it is now in my inventory, Vinculum, that's the name of that stuff. And it is uh, usable in another method. So by taking that and a label, jar label, I then can create a Vinculum label and put it on an empty jar. Therefore only that is going to go in there. So let's do this here. We're going to do an experiment. So I'm going to put in a piece of amber and it is going to have, there we go, vinculum in the bottom. Well I am going to disconnect that and it's got the vitreous at the top. Well what happens if I connect it to that? It's an empty bottle so it should go in there but because I've got that label on there it's not going to go in. So by connecting this will it go in as well? Well it's going to try and go into both so you got to keep that in mind. Disconnect it, give it a second and it will get its way down there. There we go. Oops. <laughs> there we go and sometimes it takes a few tries. Now another way of getting a label on one of these jars or just creating a label but this is uh, not uh, as transportable is just by slapping it on a jar that already has some Essentia in it and it will end up sticking to it. Now if you just pop the, bar, the jar up by punching it, picking it, whatever, it will pop up and should not be destroyed because it's a warded jar, it's magical, and therefore you can end up picking them up and transporting them around. Uh, like I said, they will hold up to 64. So what else can you do? Well, if you have a label that is for vinculum here, you can actually say, you know what, in this alembic I want only vinculum. Now you notice it says zero. One above is nothing. Well, nothing has been cooking. Well, if I put this in here, it will automatically put any vinculum in this alembic. And the next one, the vitreous will go in there. Oops, I forgot. I've currently got this hooked up. Actually, I should do that. There we go. So let's pop another couple in there. And these Alembics will only hold about 32. So keep that in mind. Uh, then if you have other Alembics that are empty, they will overflow into the other Alembics, the uh, other Essentia. A, or the same Essentia if you have more of it. So don't cook up too much stuff at once unless you've got some place to go. I also don't recommend having more than one item close by hooked up to it at a time because uh, even if you have multiple uh, vinculus all coming along here then you'll have to, uh, you know, if you have all of them connected at once it will work but it will take forever. It's really slow because it just doesn't have enough uh, suction power uh, with all of them at once. It's best just to have one connected at a time. And often either uh, hitting one of these alembics with a warded jar, which therefore you don't even need to spend the materials on an Essentia tube, uh, or just doing something simple like this early on is often the best way to go. Now getting into the more advanced stuff, there are these here, the uh, Essentia valves and the filtered Essentia tubes. 
Now, what these are good for is the essential valves are very similar to just being able to use the uh, wand on items. You put them in place, and actually here, let me show you. Open, closed. And therefore, it's similar to uh, just using a wand and going like this. But you don't have to have a wand on you. You can do this just with an open hand, and it will open and close that valve gate. Um, also, these uh, filter dissentia tubes. Now, these here, it looks like, all right, well, if I have everything just running to these, one should go into here, and the other should go into here, right? No, it doesn't quite work like that. They're still both going to compete. Both of the uh, essentia aspects are going to compete with each other going down the tubes. What this does allow, though, is that past this point, only vitreous is going to get past. So therefore, it's not going to gum up any machine, because a lot of the time there are magic items or machines in Thomcraft that run off of liquefied aspects or essentia. Uh, for instance, there's a, a giant mining machine that you can use to magically mine stuff, but it requires certain uh, uh, essentia to continuously power it. And this, if you put something like this on here, could ensure that no other aspects accidentally get into that machine and end up uh, messing it up. So uh, those can be useful, uh, usually not so much in the beginning early basic stuff. Um, I think that pretty much covers things. Oh, wait, I forgot about the void jar. That is uh, pretty handy. You make one of those. Actually, let me show you that real quick. Void jar is just a boarded jar with blaze powder, obsidian, and workbench as such. And, of course, the advanced Sensia tubes, the uh, filtered ones. Sensia tube with the V filter gets you the filtered one. Oh, and the... Um, I forgot the... Uh, the Essentia valve is a lever with an Essentia tube. So it, that's basically, if you think of it as a lever on there, that makes things simpler for you. But uh, the void jar. Let's say I have a lot of Essentia. Well, actually I need more than that. Let me uh, do as this file. Oops, I can't put that uh, that one in there. Oh, I forgot to mention as well. Um, if you have an empty hand, you can shift, right click, and empty out any jar. As well as shift, right click will remove any labels, and shift, right click will empty out any alembics. So keep that in mind. Very handy. The file of Essentia. You notice it's at 64. It won't take any more, but if I do have more going in, it will just void it out. It will just get destroyed, max out this jar. So often if you have some kind of setup where you've got a lot of these jars going and you just need it to, you know, you, you're getting non-stop amounts of uh, arbor as a byproduct, well, you don't need any more. Well, then you could have it go to a void jar like this and it can just max this one jar out and throw away all the excess, which I find extremely useful many times, especially when you get into the more complex uh, magical machinery that you can make with this mod. So I think that just about does it for uh, this part. Next time we'll go into uh, some artifice and we'll uh, do some infusing. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If so, please give me a like, comment, or subscribe. And until next time, see ya.